16 floors tall, with a size equivalent to two entire football fields, and weight more than an aircraft carrier? Located in North America, about 130 kilometers away from the shore of Louisiana, the Appomattox is one of the biggest oil rigs ever made, and everything about it is majestic, huge, and awe-inducing. Want to know more? Stick to the end of the video, because we're going to talk about the Appomattox. Whether it's the manufacturing, transport, or history of this giant masterpiece. So, without further ado, let's get started. Right now, the Appomattox is located in the Gulf of Mexico. But was it constructed right there? Nope. This monstrous oil rig was in fact manufactured and designed somewhere in South Korea, thousands of kilometers away from its current location. This oil rig was originally designed and manufactured in South Korea by thousands of engineers. At the start of the video, we mentioned some interesting yet extremely shocking facts about the physical condition of this oil rig, but did you know that its construction was also one of the biggest challenges faced by the engineers that were assigned to it? That's right folks, the smartest and best engineers were assigned to this project, and even they were dumbfounded and confused by the problem that they faced after spending around seven years working on the execution of the Appomattox. And what was that issue? Well, remember how we mentioned that this oil rig is heavier than an actual aircraft carrier? And how it was manufactured in South Korea, but is currently somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico? Yep, that was the problem. To transport the biggest oil rig in the world, they needed something just as big. So to solve that problem, the biggest marine transport vessel was needed. Now, the humongous marine transport vessel was eventually prepared. But this is not where the problem ends because now that the transport vessel was here, the bigger question was how to put the oil rig on it. In simple words, if we had to transport a car from one side of the world to the other side by water, the first step would be to put the car on a ship. Now, cars are pretty heavy, there's no doubt about that, but in this situation, the oil rig is heavier than an entire aircraft carrier. So at least seven days were required to load the oil rig onto the marine transport vessel but this is not where the problems end. Apparently, even Mother Nature wasn't in support of the Appomattox being functional. Shortly after the transport had been rigged with the Appomattox, pun intended, the engineers discovered that there was going to be a massive sea storm that would later turn into a typhoon in the Pacific Ocean. These typhoons are a step ahead of regular typhoons and are called super typhoons. And guess how frequent they are? Maybe once in 20 years? Like seriously. Nature decided the one time in 20 years when the typhoon will come is when the biggest oil rig in the world is about to be functional, after seven years of hard work and effort. So after all the engineers had executed the work on the Appomattox and the marine transport vessel, the next obstacle was that there's going to be a super typhoon with a wind speed of 315 kilometers an hour in the next seven days. But how does one stop a natural disaster from happening? And everyone knows super typhoons are incredibly lethal and the damage they do is irreversible. So the seven days that they needed to load the rig were reduced to a mere three days. So let's recall the whole situation. Three days, a super typhoon on the way, the pressure of insufficient time, the hard work of seven years, and incomplete construction of the rig. As you can tell, a lot was on the line and the odds weren't in the favor of the engineers. Another important thing is that the Appomattox was the biggest project of Shell and they'd invested a lot of money in it. The simplest mistake could result in the loss of millions of dollars, and if we look at the odds, people weren't too hopeful and they weren't wrong for it. So to complete the construction of the Appomattox, an army of extra workers was hired because, well, they didn't have a lot of time. They needed seven days to transfer the rig to the marina transportation vessel but due to the super typhoon, they only had three. The more time passed by, the more signs of the super typhoon appeared in the water and the more dangerous the entire situation became. But first, they had to load the rig after finishing its construction. And just like every other thing related to this project, the loading and transportation of the Appomattox was also complicated. If we want to load a car on a ship, usually a crane is used but nothing is strong enough to lift something heavier than an aircraft carrier, that too in water. So instead of lifting the Appomattox and putting it on the vessel, they had to sneak the vessel under the rig. For that, the water tankers of the transportation vessel were filled so that their weight would increase, 
Once the tankers were full and the vessel was heavy enough, it sank a little. This is where extremely high-powered tugboats came into play. They were attached to each side of the platform and were directed to move towards the vessel so that the platform would position itself on top of it. Sounds easy, doesn't it? But all that can go smoothly if only the water is calm and the waves are not too fast or violent. And guess what happens when there's a super typhoon in the water? So once again, the odds were extremely against the completion of the project. With the passage of time, the super typhoon was approaching them. The winds and the waves were getting more and more out of control. At this point, the engineers, designers, and workers were losing whatever little hope they had. But one day, they were given a chance. And that was all they needed. The meteorologists announced that the next day, the sea will be calm for just two hours. So all they had was two hours. They could either sit through them and be pessimistic or just give it everything they had. Around this time, the Super Typhoon was 36 hours away from the main station, where millions of people were working on Shell's biggest project. But against all odds, the next day the oil rig was finally transported on top of the vessel and Appomattox was on its way to the Gulf of Mexico. And even more luckily, the vessel was at a decent distance when the Super Typhoon hit and there was no big damage. Sounds like a happy ending, doesn't it? The oil rig was transported without any damage, the Super Typhoon came after it left, and the hard work of the workers didn't go to waste. But there's more. The next problem came when the rig had to unload in Texas. Why? Well, you do remember how we mentioned that a lot of extra people were also hired to execute the completion of the rig? Yeah, all the work wasn't done when the Appomattox left its station. Some work was intended to be completed after they'd reached Texas. Here, four modules were being prepared and the Appomattox was once again unloaded and each of the modules was placed carefully on top of the oil rig. Remember, a simple mistake was all it took for one of the biggest projects in the history of Shell Petroleum to be wrecked. First the loading, then the insufficient time for transportation, then the super typhoon, then another unloading, an addition of four new modules at a new location. Sheesh, there were a lot of chances for the engineers and workers to mess up, and the odds were not in their favor at all. But despite everything, the oil rig once again left Texas after the installation of four new modules to reach its destination, which was about 130 kilometers away. Once it reached where it was intended to, the last challenge was to connect the Appomattox to the underwater well, which was only 30,000 feet deep. Right now, the part of the Gulf of Mexico where Appomattox was floating is about 7,400 feet deep. Only this depth is equal to the length of three Burj Khalifas, but the oil well was 22,600 feet deeper than that. And when you're going that deep, the pressure of the water becomes insanely dangerous. So it was impossible for people to actually go all the way down there and connect the vessel to the well. But once again, automated technology came to the rescue and the officials controlled everything from a safe distance quite accurately. To make it easy to understand, the ROV officer did the whole thing just like it was a video game. After that, the riser transfer process was used to connect the pipes from the installation platform to the Appomattox. But that's not it. Once the pipes were connected, they were drilled into the surface of the water till they reached the depth of 22,600 feet. And after that was the final step, pumping. As soon as the oil started pumping, their mission was accomplished. They'd reached their goal, and after seven years of hard work, the project was successful. Today, the Appomattox is supplying 175,000 barrels every day and is one of the biggest suppliers of fuel in the history of mankind. And with that said, we're done with today's video. If you liked it, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. We'll be back soon. Until then, take care.